Hello and welcome guys. In this video I wanted to talk about performance of WebSockets against Cyber Sent events. And if you know over the past uh, week or so on my live streams I've been doing this. So I wanted to share with you my uh, testing setups, how I created all these uh, dashboards and configurations and overall what kind of tests I was running. So the overall consensus is that uh, WebSockets uh, should be performing better when we have frequent messages over a thousand messages like a minute or so and server sent events are more efficient when we have less messages like 30 60 messages a minute so about one message a second and uh, websockets should be doing better with uh, small payloads like hundreds of bytes maybe like a kilobyte uh, a message and uh, server sent events should be better with kilobytes of data like 5 to 50 kilobytes and uh, that's what I read in the articles, but I never tested this myself before. So I wanted to see if it's really the case and uh, how it's going to work actually. So yeah, let me show you first my testing setup and then we'll jump into results. Uh, so I was testing everything using Minikube. So my setup was on a local machine. I created Kubernetes cluster and I was sending everything via HTTP2 because I wanted to test it as close as possible to reality. And uh, overall, the most important parts are here. You can see in infra folder, and by the way, the repo will be attached in the description, the link to the repo. Uh, here you can see all the config maps for ingress, dashboards, that dashboards pretty much they attached here. So if you need, you can copy this file and edit it um, as a JSON, right? This is just a JSON. I had them before for Docker Compose. I will attach a video as well where I describe uh, these dashboards and how they can be configured but essentially you can write my recommendation just drop them into ai and they will edit them for you um, otherwise uh, the important parts here is that we have uh, an sgs deployment here and i set a limit to 1024 so basically to one gigabyte right and i limited the cpu but yeah i never had problems with cpu um, so yeah pretty much everything is here if you're wondering about HTTP setup, it's also in my Ingress uh, Nginx. You will need to add TLS certificates right there here already, so you can use mine. And pretty much this is the Minikube setup. You can use other tools to run it locally, but yeah, I always use Minikube and I'm happy with it. Um, now to the code itself. So I have SSE controller where I was uh, running tests for SSE and I have WS. So here I have WS service. Uh, which was accepting WebSocket connections. So what we have in SSE. I have uh, several endpoints here because I was once again making video about HTTP2, how it works with SSE. So I have uh, beautiful names like SendTime1 and uh, SendTime2. So in SendTime1, we are just sending uh, very simple data. It's a small payload, like 100 bytes, I think. Uh, and uh, here we're just sending time in different formats and uh, pod information because I was tracking connections to each pod uh, when it was terminated or not. So here we have pod name and pod IP, right? So very small payload. And in another one, I was sending a bigger payload. So here I have a function which generates large payload. So here I was testing last time 10 kilobytes and I was testing 50 as well. Uh, so, and I was emitting them here. Yeah, in a time one, I was emitting events based on uh, parameter I was passing in, so messages per minute. And here I was just emitting one second. Yeah, I was lazy to pass in parameters, so I was just hard coding by this time uh, because I was running tons of tests. Uh, all right, so this is SSE setup, and for WebSocket setup, it's pretty similar. Um, right, I have a bit more configurations here, but that's not the point. I'm just adding some Prometheus memory profiling, but overall, I have. Um, on connection, I added this function, which emits once again, the same events like in SSE, the same generate large payload. Uh, so I was removing, adding it uh, based on what I was testing. And overall for like chat testing, I had this subscribe message to message. And here I was emitting once again, a small payload, just original message, which I received and I was sending it back and timestamp and once again, pod info, because I was checking if my pods were disconnecting or not. Uh, all right, this is pretty much it for messaging. And also I had a couple of, of 
interceptors, right, which uh, record the memory. So they are very similar for uh, this is WS memory tracking interceptor, and I had the same one for HTTP2 uh, for HTTP uh, requests, which are SSE. So here I'm just collecting memory, right, uh, getting the difference, and then just I have uh, in Prometheus service, which once again I explained in one of my other videos, I'm recording the information. And the same was happening for uh, SSE. Also, I have um, interceptor which connects, uh, which uh, tracks connections. Uh, how many connections I've made, right? Uh, just a bit a different metric. So I was uh, testing this as well. And um, overall, this is everything from the server side. And also I have two functions to simulate the client. So as you can see for WebSocket simulation, I was using Socket.io client. And then I was providing uh, URL. Well, the URL was default one, right? And then I was providing we are arguments when I was starting the script, uh, either connection count, messages per minute, and duration. And the important part, then I'm looping through all the connections and making a socket to your connection, forcing you every time to make sure that I'm simulating like as realistic as possible. And then I was tracking like on message, on error. And previously I was doing uh, setup. I think I should have it here when I was um, emitting messages back and forth. So sending messages from the client and then uh, replying back from the server or was just server sending events and or I was doing this bidirectionally. So in the end, I removed this part uh, because the results were very similar and I wanted to test WebSocket as, WebSockets as close as possible to server sent events. So I just uh, basically used them like server sent events when I was just emitting events from the server to the client and client was not responding. I mean, besides ping pong. And um, this is the WebSockets and for SSE, pretty much the similar, very similar setup. So even instead of um, sockets, I'm using event source for server sent events and I'm connecting via HTTP2 to my server. And once again, looping just through everything. And once again, on open, on message, on error, right? And I'm in the end doing some cleanup, nothing special. All right, so this is from everything from testing setup. Uh, if you want to run the scripts, you will need to build the project and then you can run something like this, right? Uh, I didn't create a specific script in package.json, but uh, yeah, because it's very straightforward. So it's here you will need to change SSC to WS to run different uh, scripts. So then you, via dash C, you specify number of connections, dash M is number of messages and D is duration. So if I will run it, it will quickly create me tons of connections. Duration is just five seconds. So I think it will terminate immediately. And yeah, and we're done. And um, if you would like to see the metrics, uh, they will look something like this. I have them in Grafana dashboard. So in dashboards, you will have two dashboards, one for memory leak detection, where we have just overall memory performance. And in another one, we have just SGS specific where the interceptors were sending information. So here we have uh, overall memory usage, which is the current container memory, right? We have 224, so it's way more than we need. And here we have like SSC, WebSocket connections, stuff like this, and overall memories performance in our application, how it's spread out. So I've talked about this in one of my previous videos as well. I'll have a link in the description as well. Uh, all right, I think this is it from the setup. Now let's move to results. Right, so I have a few diagrams prepared. So the first one is where WebSockets should perform better. This is a simulation of uh, essentially a chat. We have a thousand connections, right? Thousand users connected. We're sending 100 bytes uh, per each message. So just uh, some kind of text. And then I was testing how many messages per minute we are sending. And on the left side, we have uh, RAM usage. So essentially this is a high frequency, low message size environment. And as, as you can see, uh, WebSockets were performing better than SSE, uh, around 10, 20%. Uh, when they had zero connections, actually they were quite similar, but then, yeah, SSE, because SSE is sending uh, text-based messages and WebSockets are using binary data, WebSockets outperformed the SSE. Uh, but then I run a bit of a different test. So I was uh, sending always constantly 30 messages a minute. So two messages, uh, oh, sorry, one message every two seconds. And then I was sending 10 kilobytes message. So this is something to simulate like a message feed, right? Every two seconds, I'm sending like market update or some kind of news. And 
this is where Seven Cent Events was supposed to win. At least this is what I read before. But uh, yeah, I never tested it myself. And in my testing environment, WebSockets outperform still SSE, as you can see. And then I tried even 50 kilobytes with 60 messages a minute. So every second I'm emitting 50 kilobyte message size and still WebSockets performed better than Seven Cent Events surprisingly and then i was reading more into articles which were providing this kind of information that seven cent events should perform better with like news feed information and uh, yeah there was not much of a testing done i found only one article where the person did testing themselves and they ran into similar results that i have so overall as you can see web sockets are performing better all over the board compared to sse Maybe if you have more connections than this, but uh, like a millions, it would be different. Uh, but for my job, I didn't need to perform this testing and I don't have an environment to test this out. Right, so I didn't go this far. But for now, uh, yeah, WebSock is just better. Just a brief pause. If you enjoy this type of content or want to watch me live code projects like this, hit subscribe button and ring the bell. It is free, takes two seconds, and helps me a ton. As you can see, only a very small percentage of you guys actually subscribe to my channel. Anyways, thank you very much for all the support. Let's continue. And as a conclusion, I wanted to talk about the differences and when to use which. So overall, from performance side, I would say you should always use WebSockets from the results I've got. So building any real-time application, if you're not using some kind of toy application like practicing whatever you should use websockets like performance when performance memory usage matters this is websockets if you have bidirectional obviously you will use websockets but even if you have unidirectional communication you should use websockets based on of performance so sse you should use only if you they can be blocked by firewalls so if you're working for some corporation with that which doesn't allow that uh, this is the only use case as i see in real life uh, beyond that it's just for demo prototype Oh, actually, yeah, uh, you can probably work uh, if you need to cache some kind of news feed. You can do this with SSE because it's probably going to be easier. I haven't tested this myself. And uh, overall, just if you don't want to install any packages for simplicity's sake, uh, because SSE is available right out of the box, you don't need to install anything, you should use SSE. But at my job, we're going to stick with WebSockets because, yeah, I tested the setup we have pretty much like 5x uh, the load and uh, yeah websockets performed better and this is pretty much it for this video if you found any errors or would like to test me something different let me know or if something wasn't clear let me know in comments down below i'll try to explain and overall thanks for watching and uh, yeah see you in the next video take care guys bye bye